Joining me, Van Jones, Bakari Sellers, Jason Miller, Anna Navarro, and Mark Lauder. Lauder. Anna, I mean, in your opinion, is there any other way to interpret this comment other than being just racist? Of course, there's no other way to interpret it. This is not an isolated comment. The first thing he did when he started running was call Mexicans rapists. He has gone on to equate white supremacists in Charlottesville to the people protesting against them. He has called black athletes sons of bitches. He has feuded with the congresswoman who represents little Haiti, Frederica Wilson. He Last year, at this time, he was feuding with civil rights icon John Lewis. This is not a coincidence. This is a pattern of behavior. We have a racist, a shameless racist, who has hijacked the Republican Party, who has hijacked the Oval Office. And this country needs to stand up against this and tell him that we will not let him divide us by color, by race, by ethnicity, by class, by economy. We will not be quiet. We will not allow this. Donald Trump, this is not America. This is not America. And we will fight against your division, your racism, your anger, your hatred, and all the horrible things you are trying to do to this country. Van Jones, uh, I mean, should this come as a surprise to people? Well, I mean, it's not only racist, it's also just inaccurate. I mean, I just want to, numbers sometimes matter. 33% of Americans have college degrees. Uh, God bless everybody, it's a lot of hard work, now we've got student debt. 43% of African immigrants have college degrees, okay? 11% of white people in America have a graduate degree. Uh, one quarter, 25 percent of Nigerian Americans have uh, a graduate degree. So uh, what is he talking about? I, I, part of the thing is that when you're relying on just horrible stereotypes, by the way, Melania Trump, our, our first lady, who I admire greatly, is from Slovenia, not exactly the jewel of Europe, Slovenia. But she's welcome here, and Nigerians are not. There's something wrong with the way this president is proceeding. I don't think anybody here on this panel uh, can defend these kind of comments. If you want to have a conversation about immigration policy, you can have it without insulting whole continents and, and whole countries, uh, especially when you have uh, African immigrants coming to this country, making America better every day and being disrespected by this president. Jason, I mean, the idea that uh, all Haitians have AIDS, uh, that they should get out, that the president doesn't want more black people from Africa or from Haiti, wants more white people from Norway, is that defensible? So, Anderson, that's not at all what the president said. And so let's talk about the context of what today was. He, today he didn't was say that, that all Haitians have AIDS? Uh, no, no. He, the according to the New York Times. That. He no, and the White, the White House. Ago. Well, Anderson, the White House has denied that. Right, they denied that I. when it was a meeting of White House staff. But when it's a group of bipartisan lawmakers today, they can't deny it because bipartisan lawmakers heard it. So, well, and to, you think well, it's such uh, a big which, jump for him to say all Haitians have AIDS to him saying but, uh, Anderson, that, I, that I, it's I don't a shithole? It, Anderson, I don't think the point here is for you or me or anyone else on this panel to put words into the president's we mouth. We don't need to put I words in the president's mouth. I think the it's, president it's, is putting racist words in his own mouth. So let's anyway, so go ahead. He, he was not making racist comments. So today, the whole point of the meeting is the fact that President Trump, unlike Democrats and Republicans in the past, is actually going to get something done on dreamers, something that I don't think he's getting any credit okay, for. We're talking about Haitians so and black people so, from Africa. But hold on. So this is the meeting. He having a meeting, a bipartisan meeting, talk about what we're going to do about the seven or 800,000 dreamers who are here. They get to the section on overall comprehensive immigration reform. Again, something that Obama couldn't get done, Bush couldn't get done, but Trump's going to get it done. So they get to the section on merit-based immigration. And and the president has been very clear that he doesn't think there should be carve outs from any country, not from Norway, not from Great Britain, not from Haiti, not from El Salvador, not from any country. Does he think there should be special carve outs uh, by each country? He thinks it should be merit based by each person. And that's something that what does Canada that have to do does. With talking so about that, S-hole because so hold countries. on, hold on, because so he very specifically. So there's more people with so, merit from Norway so, than there are from Haiti and from so Africa. The point Africa, by the way, an the enormous point he's continent full of is it should be of by the individual. Individual, it shouldn't be carve outs. The plan that these lawmakers came back to them actually still had these carve outs for countries that are on the TPS list, countries that are in severely economically distressed places that are sending us tens of thousands of people Africa. who have literally, if they, if they even have the shirts Africa. on their backs, then have, they're Have you been lucky. to Africa? Uh, I mean, I have, do you know how many countries are in Africa? Does the president know? I know the country, the president likes to make up countries that are not actually in Africa and that don't actually exist. 
But they're but actually the, Anderson, incredibly developed the, and well-off countries in Africa. In fact, the president when speak, Anderson, well, no, in fact, when the president out. was speaking to black African Anderson, leaders, he was talking about all his rich friends who are making so much money in Africa. Anderson, respectfully speaking, you're leaving a lot out for the conversation because what, as you even heard from Jim Acosta and we've heard from previous blocks, not only did the president say when he was thrown out of their country and he's talking about countries that are doing much better economically, he said Norway or, or countries in Asia. He didn't go and name specific countries in Asia. So he's talking around the world, but he's like, why would you go and specifically say that there need to be carve outs from countries that are so economically right. so, distressed. So he, he's willing to generalize about that. all Asians as being people who are working hard and, and deserve the merit of coming here, but all Africans are not. How is no, that not he's, uh, and, something Anderson, by he's, race? He's making the point that it should be by individuals and it shouldn't be going and targeting So everybody in Asia countries. is merit is hardworking and deserves no, to and, come and, here. No, and Anderson, that's not what the president said. It should be, the whole point is it should be on merit-based system, just like the way that Canada does it on a points-based system. Uh, it's a, a pretty smart, comprehensive immigration idea. I think ultimately the president's going to get it done. Get in, okay. And this is, this is getting Van, twisted Van, around. I want you to respond and to it, that. This is not, I mean, you're, you're trying to well, make it sound like... Uh, Go ahead, Dan. No matter what, no, listen, I, I give you an A for effort, but the reality is you haven't addressed the issue that has alarmed the entire world. When you say S whole countries, and then you say Norway is welcome and these people are not, that is not a smart conversation about immigration policy. You and I can disagree and argue about skills based versus TPS versus anything else, but that's not what was happening. In what's fact, happening there was salty language. Hold, there hold was on a second. Language you got, on both you got sides. your chance. You, you, and that's not what's happening. What's happening is you have a president that has shown his heart to the country. He showed his heart. And in his heart, people from Africa, a, 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 he, people from Africa, a billion, almost a billion people live in Africa. To him, they all are s-hole people who live in s-hole places that and you know is what? wrong Van, if, and you should denounce it remain, and by the way sir and jason i know you very country, well you should denounce it you should Van, denounce that jason i know you very country, well and why won't you denounce that why won't you world, denounce Van, s-hole everyone, nation everyone in the world wants to come to the u.s you why won't you denounce it because this is a great place if we're going to think africa is an s-hole continent we have to reform jason we have to reform i think we do i think i think that the president absolutely i'm talking man to man i'm talking you person to person and, and don't try to bait me here, Van. I'm giving you straight answer Africa that we is need an to have. whole continent, I, yes or no? I, you know what? There yes are a lot no? of s-hole places all around the world. Do you think and Africa you know is an s-hole con uh, continent? Van, Van, you think it's, Haiti is an s-hole continent? It's a great effort to try to bait me because on the is left, your you've run said out of me? ideas. You've run out of ideas, and no, so you're I've, trying to bait me on want, something. You want to have a conversation about immigration policy? Okay, let me bring in Let me bring in Bakari Sellers. Let me just say this. Nobody can hear when we're all talking. Bakari, we haven't heard from you. When, uh, I mean, Jason is saying, you know, that there's uh, a lot of uh, shithole country. I mean, why don't we, let's just use the word the president is using. If it's good enough for the president of the United States to use it, I think the American people deserve to hear what words the president is using. The idea that uh, all countries in Africa are shitholes is just woefully ignorant. It's just, I mean, it's just moronic but I mean, I, I think and, and it shows the president knows nothing. Yeah, but I think that, I mean, I, I have to give uh, Jason the name of my chiropractor for getting in that pretzel to defend this nonsense. I mean, the comments that the president made were asinine. They were ignorant. Any other adjective you want to add to this discussion. But why are we surprised? I mean, why is this breaking news? I mean, if we go back in history, this is the same man who was sued by the Department of Justice and used to put a little C on black people's applications for color. Why are we surprised? This is the same person who was sued by African-American and minority dealers in his casino. Why are we surprised? This is the same man who still has not apologized for the Central Park Five. I mean, down here in South Carolina, we look out and throw our hands up to black folk and say, we have tried to tell you this is who this man was. It's not as if he is just showing you his heart today. Stokely Carmichael once said, a white man who wants to lynch me, that is his problem. A white man who has the power to lynch me, that is my problem. Racism is a question of power, not a question of attitude. And so when we say that the president of the United States is racist, it's because he harbors these views and he has the power to implement policy which subjugate these people to oppressive systems. I mean, this is not rocket science and I'm not surprised at all. And I, I, I'm actually more surprised, and this is what drives me up a wall, Anderson. This is, this is the problem with the discussion that we're having. People want to say, oh my God, he's talking to economic anxiety voters, or he's giving red meat to his base. The hell with all of that. I am sick and tired of the good people in this country who support Donald Trump, who will not stand up and call this for what it is. We have an issue with race in this country that dates long back before Donald Trump 
and long back before Barack Obama and George Bush and Bill Clinton and George Bush. But we have never dealt with that issue because good people sit on their hands. Yeah. If you cannot sit here on live TV and say that what the president of the United States, be his friend or not his friend, said was racist, then you are not contributing to breaking this a more perfect union. We, we, this is the frustrating part of this whole thing. 